Good morning and welcome to worship at Zion Lutheran Church in Buffalo, Minnesota. We're so glad that you have joined us online today. Um, a couple of announcements before we get started. Holy Week is coming up on Monday, Thursday, which is April 1st, and Good Friday, which is April 2nd. There will be online worship services available. On Good Friday, there will also be a community service, a collaborative community service that will be available online. Then on Easter Sunday, which is April 4th, there are a few options for worship. At 8 a.m. and 9 a.m., there will be indoor in-person worship. So if you, if you want to join us for that, you'll need to RSVP on Sign Up Genius. And then at 10 a.m. on Easter Sunday, there'll be an online service and also an outdoor option. So lots of ways to join us on Easter. Then the final announcement I have this morning is that Easter garden orders are due March 24th, so get your orders in soon. So good morning and say hello to one another in the comments. We're so glad that you're here to worship together. Please join in our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Christ Jesus. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour, pour out, out your, your mercy, mercy over us. us. Our, our sin, sin is heavy and, and we long to be free. free. Rebuild, Rebuild what we have ruined. ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing blood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus. As healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Blessed, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside. There's a better life, there's a better life. Think our pain is a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. Think our chase, he's a chain breaker. search for the light of day in the dead of night we've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight we've all run to things we don't just stay right and there's a better life there's a better life if you've got pain he's a pain taker if you feel low Shaking, Savior, they got 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading for today comes from the book of Ephesians, the second chapter. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses. And we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Well, good morning, and uh, just going to spend a little time with the young people here. I brought something along that many of you might have in your homes. Do you recognize what that is? See the plug on the back? These were actually given out by the city of Buffalo a year or so ago. This is a night light, and we use night lights to find our way when it's dark in our houses. If we don't have a night light, we might bump into things. Have you ever stubbed your toe in the middle of the night? Oh, that hurts. Or run into a table maybe with your shin or, or bonked your head on something because you couldn't see? Well, that's why we have night lights. And if we didn't have a night light, we might even get lost in our own house and not know exactly where we are if it got dark enough. By using the light of the night light though, we're able to find our way and to avoid some of those obstacles so we don't hurt ourselves and so we don't get lost. Well, we know that in our lives we have some dark times too that uh, sometimes feel really, really dark and we're not exactly sure where we're going. Maybe we're sad about something or we're scared about something, we're anxious, we're worried, or maybe we're feeling hurt. Either our body hurts or our heart hurts for some reason and things feel really dark. Well, the Bible story that Bristol is about to read is from the Gospel of John. And John, all the way from the very beginning of his Gospel, talks about Jesus being the light of the world. And if you listen closely today, John will, uh, the Gospel lesson will talk about Jesus saying that uh, he is the, the light that has come into the world. And Jesus will talk about light and darkness in our story. Now, you'll also hear a verse that you might recognize. It's one of the most familiar verses in the Bible. And it tells about how the, the fact that how God showed how much God loves the world was by sending Jesus into the world to be the light. Well, Jesus is like our nightlight. When things seem really, really dark in our lives, emotionally especially, we can ask Jesus for help and Jesus will shine a light for us. 
And that way we don't get lost or we don't keep bumping into obstacles. So let's pray and ask uh, Jesus to help us and to thank God for sending Jesus as our light. So repeat after me. Dear God, we thank you for loving the world and sending Jesus as our light. Help us to trust in his light to bring us out of our dark places and lead us each and every day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Well, have a wonderful day. It's the middle of the night when Jesus hears a knock on the door. Maybe he's already changed into his pajamas. Maybe he's already asleep, but he answers the door anyway. And there on his doorstep is Nicodemus, one of the Jewish leaders. 
Teacher, Nicodemus says, I have some burning theological questions, and you know so much about God. Can I come in and talk with you for a while? Now, did Nicodemus come to Jesus in the night because he was too busy during the day? This was around the time of Passover, so it's possible. Thousands of people traveled to Jerusalem for the religious festival. It was probably a busy week. Or perhaps Nicodemus came to Jesus at night because he was ashamed and afraid to be seen with Jesus during the day. It's true that Jesus was often clashing publicly with religious authorities. Well, Jesus, for his part, seems to take this nighttime conversation in stride. He engages Nicodemus in conversation. We might imagine that first Jesus yawned or rolled his eyes or said something like, are these questions that important that we have to talk about them right now in the middle of the night? Can't you come by the synagogue tomorrow and we can talk about this over coffee? But all the gospel tells us is that Jesus does let Nicodemus in. And they have a conversation about how God can transform each of us from the inside out. A transformation that's so radical, it's like being born all over again. That's exactly how Jesus puts it. He says, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Nicodemus is confused by this. He doesn't see the kingdom of God yet. He doesn't understand what Jesus is all about. So Jesus tries again to clarify. He speaks the words that are our gospel reading for today from John chapter 3. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil, For all who do evil hate the light and do not come into the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is what Jesus really wants Nicodemus to know. This is at the heart of Jesus' mission and message. Jesus is here out of love, for the world. Not judgment, not condemnation, not punishment, but love. Love is the motivation for the incarnation. The text says, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That story about a savior being born in a manger in Bethlehem, that's a story about love. God, who created the world, loved that world so much that God came to be part of it in Jesus. And love is what brings Jesus to the crucifixion. As the text says, the Son of Man must be lifted up. That story about a Savior lifted up and dying on a cross, speaking forgiveness even for those who kill him, that is a story about love. Here's how the Apostle Paul tells that story in the Ephesians passage that we heard earlier. God, who is rich in mercy, saved us through grace. God made us alive in Christ when we were dead, and God did this out of the great love with which he loved us. Love is at the heart of Jesus' mission and message. It is what God in Christ is all about. And when you experience that love, It changes you. It's like you're born all over again, a whole new person. It's like a bright light shining on you, revealing who you really are. And according to Jesus, the light of the world, who you really are is beloved. Who you really are is so loved by God that God would come to the world just to be close to you, that God would die before giving up that love for you. 
So why would some people run from that light of love? Jesus tells Nicodemus that some people would rather hide in darkness than let themselves be exposed to the light. Why? Well, it can be scary to let yourself be fully seen. It feels vulnerable and risky. We hide our true selves from other people, even people who love and accept us. How much more intimidating is the thought of letting your true self be known to God? This is why Jesus talks so much about the importance of belief. Jesus uses the word believe seven times in this conversation with Nicodemus. The Greek word believe has a connotation more of trust than of knowledge. So when Jesus tells Nicodemus that he has to believe in Christ, we might hear that as saying that he has to trust in Christ. It takes trust to step into the light, to reveal your true self to God, to have faith that God's response will be as Jesus promises. God's response will be love. So people are afraid to step into the light because they're afraid to be seen. But they're also afraid to see. They're afraid to see what needs to be changed in their lives afraid to see what needs to be changed in the world around them. Jesus says that when you see the kingdom of God, it catalyzes a change so radical, it's like being born anew. Paul is similarly dramatic. He says the change is like having been dead and coming back to life. A transformation like that doesn't happen without pain and fear. It doesn't happen without sacrifice. Some things will be lost. You have to let go of who you were, give up your old life, and step into the unknown, become someone new and different. And Jesus is clear, some people don't want that kind of change. They want to keep doing what they've been doing. They want to stay in the status quo They don't want to rock the boat of their lives. They don't want to risk what God might ask of them. They'd rather close their eyes and stay in darkness than let that light shine onto what needs to change. People run from the light because they're afraid to see or be seen. Now, remember, Jesus is telling Nicodemus all of this at night, in the dark. This is long before the days of electricity, so at most the room would have been lit by a few candles or an oil lamp. Perhaps they were standing in a courtyard lit only by stars. Surrounded by that thick darkness, Jesus tells Nicodemus, some people will resist the light out of fear, but some people will step into the light, let God see their true selves, and let God make them into something new. It's almost as though Jesus is asking Nicodemus, which kind of person are you? Will you choose the light? It's almost as if Jesus is asking us, will you choose the light? Now don't hear that question from Jesus as a threat. Hear that as an invitation, a reminder that God's welcome of love will always be available to you. You can come back to it again and again. It is a gift, as Paul says, not something you need to earn or accomplish. That is what grace means, the gift of salvation that is offered to us unconditionally. That can be especially hard to remember during Lent when we focus so much on spiritual disciplines and developing virtues. We talk about prayer and fasting and generosity. But we strengthen those practices because they help us know God better, not because we need to improve before God will love us. God already loves us. We grow in faith as a response to that love, not as a prerequisite of it. Still, knowing the truth of God's unconditional love in your mind and believing the truth of God's unconditional love in your heart 
are two different things. And sometimes we find ourselves in one of those categories, avoiding the light because we don't want to be seen by God or because we don't want to see what God might reveal in our lives. And you know what? That's okay. That's where the trust comes in. If you're afraid, step into the light anyway. Let God see you and change you anyway. Fear and doubt do not disqualify you from God's grace. You can bring those experiences into the light with you. You can trust that Jesus' word is the truth. God's response to you and to the whole world is always one of love. If you need a reminder of that love, look to the cross. The cross is that symbol of God's death-defying, life-giving, chain-breaking, self-sacrificing love for you and the whole world. And you can remember this line that we heard from Ephesians, we are what God has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. You are what God has made you, and God has made you to be loved and to love. When the transformation scares you and you want to hide from the light, remember that you are made for this. You are meant to live in love, and all that awaits you in the light is new life. Let's pray. God, you have made us for the light. Help us trust that your response of love will meet us wherever we are. Transform us into people who reflect your light into the world you so love. Amen. I'm not 
the same and a hope that will carry Please join me in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended, he descended into hell. hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You sent your Son that the world might be saved through him. Help us to cherish that gift and to live with grateful hearts for all you have done. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. Strengthen Zion, that we might truly share Christ's word, strengthen faith, and serve those in need. Empower missionaries, Bible translators, and ministers of service in your name. Bless our partners in ministry, Village of Hope in Zambia, Mission Jamaica, Redeemer Church in North Minneapolis, that together we might declare that you have so loved this world that you sent Jesus, your Son. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy is great. great. Through the work of people, your steadfast love is shown. Nourish the earth, sky, and seas, and give us spring rains to renew the earth. Bless all who work in agriculture as they prepare for the growing season. Farmers, equipment operators, mechanics, salespeople, agronomists, elevator employees, and all who help show your love by producing food to feed a hungry world. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. Your mercy endures forever. Deliver all who cry to you especially those who are hungry or without homes. Give life in places where death seems triumphant. Give healing to those who are sick and comfort those who mourn. Today, we pray in the silence of our heart for our own concerns. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Amen. And now we go from here, and with all we are and all we do, we will trust, trust, live, and serve Christ Jesus our Lord. Accepted, you were condemned.